All right, well, I'm delighted to be joined in studio by one of the best young Irish motor racing uh, drivers around. Uh, James Rowe is in studio, Formula 3 driver in America at the moment. How are you keeping? Good, good. Thanks for, thanks for having me here. You're back home for a few weeks? Yeah, back home for two weeks to uh, get a few things in line and uh, carry out an interview process for the Motorsport and Young Driver of the Year Award. So making most of it while I'm here. You're being interviewed. Yeah, yeah, it's a, an award for a, the young driver of the year, basically, and um, to make you jump through a few hoops. Yeah, you're interviewed by a panel of six and have to carry out a, an online submission, and uh, there's quite a bit of work to it, but it's for fifty thousand euro to further a driver's right. career, um, backed by. So there's a good reason why to make it work for it. Absolutely, yeah, they're not gonna not gonna give it away to anyone. So four times the up for it. So. Uh, Let's see what happens, we'll give it our all. So you've been nominated three times previously? Yeah, and in the, in the final three, the last three times too. Did you get at him for coming second or third? No, unfortunately, in this game, there's no uh, no rewards for second or third, yeah. Wow, so there's been a bit of pressure on. Yeah. And without uh, wanting to ruin your chances of winning and uh, delving too deep, mm -hmm. what are they looking for, do you think, through the interview process? Because it, clearly they don't feel it's something they can just judge on your performance on the track. Is it because there's so much money involved in the bursary that they're giving out that they're looking for somebody who'll make best use of that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's an all-rounded individual who can best represent Motorsport Ireland, both Sport Ireland, in a brand ambassador role. And for someone like me who's racing internationally, what I do abroad is what people will think of Irish motorsport. So. It's my, my job and my, my role to, um, to put out the, the, right, the, the right story about mm. Irish motorsports. So that's, I think, what they're looking for and uh, I understand exactly why they would be doing so. So, best young driver, what age are you? I'm 21 years old, just turned 21 last week. Ah, so, very good. Yeah. Good celebration? Yeah, we did. We did good. I made us home for that as well. <laughs> ah, good man, good man. So you're based in America at the moment? Yeah. Driving Formula 3 cars? Yeah, based in America for the last two seasons, uh, based out of Chicago at the moment. Arrived over there two years ago, just after I'd done my leave insert and uh, competed in a, a series called F2000, which is the first step of the ladder in, in the US, so to speak. And um, things went extremely well right from the get-go, and we had a number of wins and lap records, and then decided, OK, America is it. I'm, I'm going to pursue it here. There's a lot of opportunities, and I saw many team owners and team managers taking an interest so I stuck to it and uh, early this year then I got offered a scholarship to compete in US Formula 3 so it's just been amazing so far an amazing story and um, also very fortunate to have a number of amazing partners on board so without them I wouldn't be there in the first place so it's just been a, a whole you're living the dream yeah, I guess you could say that. It's, it's, it's it, it, Was it the dream? Like when you were a young kid growing up, was this the dream to be driving motor cars professionally? Yeah, well, my my uncle, um, Michael Rowe, was a professional race car driver back in the 80s and so on. He'd done IndyCar and Le Mans and so on. So growing up as a kid, the interest was always there from him and hearing the stories. And then the family business is a car repair shop in... Uh, in County Kildare, so... It's very I, much in the blood. Yeah, always been around cars, and for one reason or another, it started quite late, but... What age were you? Uh, 15 years old. Right, so you, were you karting before no. that? Like, the general path is, I think, yeah. kids these days start at five, six, karting, and they're almost spotted at that age. Yeah, no, it is quite the opposite. So I didn't start motorsport until I was 15 years old, so the story in its own right is vastly different to what you would hear from your, your average um, motor racing driver, as you just said. So so six years ago? Yeah, literally. You never raced before? No, no. So things have progressed extremely fast in two years in Ireland. And What did you start racing? Um, I raced in a series called Janetta Junior Ireland, which is a championship for 14 to 17 year olds in Ireland. And uh, my uncle and I ran the car by ourselves. and. Um, it was kind of a bit of a, a miracle story. Like first race out, we were on the podium, and then things progressed. We had wins and lap records. So then we went to the UK and raced in a series called Formula Ford 1600 for two years. And again, we'd race wins and, and lap records. And uh, then, as I said last year, we went to America, and uh, mm. here we are now. And how was it that you were 15 by the time you started racing? Was there something always in you as a kid that you would love to have got out there and opportunities didn't present themselves? Or yeah. had you just other interests as a kid and eventually you stumbled upon racing and decided, actually, this is it for me? Look, motor racing isn't 
the cheapest sport out there. Yeah. You don't go out and buy a pair of football boots or buy a football and away you go. There's a lot of costs involved. You have to buy a car, you have to in infrastructure to run the car and so on. We had the infrastructure, but for various reasons, just didn't ha wasn't the right time to, to, to buy a race car. So I always wanted to go racing, as I said, and I saved up the whole way through, through my youth, <laughs> working in the family business, confirmation money, communion money, whatever, and took me until I was 14 years old, to be exact, to buy the car myself. And then we raced it when I was uh, 15 years old. And Are you allowed to buy a car when you're 14? <laughs> I don't know. I guess uh, in motor racing, anyone will take your money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Right, so it was the the hard way up to make it to that grid for the very first time. Yeah. And did you feel straight away that there was a, a natural talent? Was it obvious quite early that there was something there? Yeah, well, as I said, when we hit the track for the first time, we were on the podium. Mm. And um, I think just from listening to motor racing stories all my life and being around cars all my life, you, you naturally build up some sort of knowledge and um, I was just able to translate that onto the track when we got on it and then things were fast tracked a little bit as I was fortunate to be put on Team Ireland which is an academy t that supports two young drivers every year um, and I got an eight in my second year of racing so that taught me a huge amount of things about motor racing mm. about what's required and how to get yourself to the next level and I think only for it I probably wouldn't have progressed as quickly. Um, and are you competing at that stage? Are you competing against people who've had a similar path who had also started later? Are you competing against people who have spent an awful lot more time on racetracks than you have? Yeah, that, that, you're, you hit the nail on the head there. The people that I was competing against have all came up through go-karting. And in some cases, there's guys at 14 years old who have a, already have a 10-year career under their belt. So it, it, it's really remarkable. Um, and did you feel... At any stage, I don't want to say intimidated, but you spoke there that you felt because of the family background and because of your uncle, when you first started out, you did have a big, broad knowledge base, yeah, yeah. but it's not first-hand experience of yes. sitting in the car competing. Yeah. Was there, were there times in those early stages where you felt that that was something holding you back? I wouldn't say it was holding me back from a raw speed point of view you can either drive a car you can't um, certainly there was areas where I was lacking maybe on racecraft and a little bit on decision making maybe if there's two laps to go and that's just stuff you gain from experience like anything in life um, so initially yes but as I said I'm very fortunate to have someone right beside me who has my best interests at heart and has been down this road before at a professional level so I could tap into my uncle's knowledge as I said and that was extremely valuable. You talked there about, I don't want to overhype it and say, the struggle of mm. trying to make it to start. So many, it feels, of elite, and I'm talking Formula One here, very much come from money, that you need to be extremely wealthy to be able to make it. It doesn't sound as though you come from that sort of a background, that you've actually had to really go and, and earn everything that you've got yeah. so far. Like, is, is that your impression of it, actually, that you're a little bit of an outsider to the way that a lot of people have made their way through motorsports so far? Yeah, you could you could say that. I mean, certainly the story is different than what, mm. as as you just said, than what you usually hear. So, yeah, you could say that. But I guess through hard work, results, and determination, anything I is possible. And I've been extremely fortunate, as I said, to get onto Team Ireland, which was set up by uh, an Irish American businessman, John Campion, who in turn set up a team called CJJ Motorsports, which I'm on now and only for the likes of him and other amazing sponsors and people who have helped me out over the years and are currently helping me out, I probably wouldn't be where I am. So I'm very mindful of that and don't underestimate that in any way. How does the move to America come about? So America has a lot of scholarship systems in place um, where the champions of certain series get a scholarship to progress onto the next level uh, as opposed to Europe and uh, other parts of the world. The perception is that if you're a champion in your own series, you basically get a clap on the back and say, "Well done." You're, you have to go searching for for your deal Private next year. Funding again. Exactly. So, um, I went to America with the with the mindset, "I need to get one of these scholarships," and thankfully we did that. We we got one for for my second year there. Obviously, I wasn't going to get one my first year out there. Went out, got the results, proved myself. Um, what did the scholarship cover? The scholarship was hundred thousand dollars to to put me on the 
put me on the put me on the grid and um as I said all along only for it I wouldn't be there but not to forget about all the sponsors and partners mm. that we have on board to create create the rest of it and um it's a whole group effort. So what does it take to get on the grid grid then money wise? Like to, to run a season in Formula Three, what sort of backing are you looking at? Uh it's it's it, it varies depending on what sort of program you have in place, how many pre season days testing you do and in season days and so on. But a full blown budget in Formula Three could be anywhere from one hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand um, dollars, and in some cases even more, depending mm. on how you go about it, depending on what team you're with, how much experience they have. Uh, budgets can stretch up as high as four hundred and four fifty, so it's by no means loose change. Yeah. So you have to try and figure out reasons why someone would come on board and support you. It has to be, if you don't use the word return on investment for someone, it's it's not small change that is you're not just going to get given it and say go have fun. So. So that, what are the reasons why? I guess the obvious one is that you win races and you get them exposure, but are, yeah. there, are there other reasons? Yeah, there, there's there's many reasons, and, and it depends on what each individual partner, whether it be sponsor or partner, wants. Um, but. The main thing at the moment is business to business introduction because you're in a, a vastly, vastly big environment with many fans watching on and many other corporations at the racetrack. So it's a perfect environment for one business to meet another business mm. and then do business together. So that, that's one of the, the big attractions at the moment. And then brand awareness and customer appreciation, corporate days out, everything. There's 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 so many different ways you can you can go about it. Um, and thankfully, it's working out and everyone's happy so far. I feel like I'm talking a lot about money. Do you, maybe too much, do you spend have to spend a lot of time thinking about money? Yeah. Like, is it is, yeah. it, is it the biggest part away from the track, constantly thinking, how am I going to make sure I'm bringing in enough that I can get on the track every week? Yeah, it's it's one of, the, one of the many things that I find myself doing is looking after that aspect. And I, thankfully, I have a number of professional individuals around me who can help me in that area and do help me and so on but again at the end of the day it comes back to me and I'm the type of person where I want to I want to know what's going on and I want to make sure whoever's involved is happy with what what's going on and they're getting a return for for what they came in for so it's um it's a full-time job and it's it's obviously different in other sports that are out there um but it's what you got to do so the level you're driving at, Formula 3, uh, excuse my ignorance, I'm going to say it, they look like Formula 1 cars. Yeah. What level is it? It's, in Formula 1 terms, it's two levels below Formula 1. Okay. Um, so I'm not that far away. No, no, the next progression will be Formula 2 and then you're into Formula 1. In the American scene, it's two steps below IndyCar, which is the pinnacle of US motor racing, the Formula 1 of America, because you'd go from Formula 3 to Indy Lights and then IndyCar. Um, so really, you could say one step on the ladder away from the pinnacle. So the next year is going to tell an awful lot as to what what way that's going to look. And is Formula Three is it full of people like you, young up and coming racers? Are there guys in their thirties, forties who've just found that to be their level and are happy getting out there competing every week? Or is it very much seen as a, a feeder school for Formula Two, IndyCar, Formula One? No, by no means is it is it. Uh a hobby category to put it that way. Everyone who's in Formula Three is career minded and they they have all been racing for ten or maybe twelve years in some cases. So for someone to stay at a sport that long, mm. they must be getting results. Um so you find that the opposition that you're against are all high level drivers and um it's the it's the best of the best in, in North America and um you have to beat them to, to get to the next step. Yeah, so how have you been getting on with beating them? Good. This year, this year we'd uh, we'd a pretty pretty solid year. Given as my first year at a professional level, many top four, top five finishes, and one huge win at Road America in Elkhart Lake in front of sixty thousand people. So, um, very positive. Given that it was our first year at such a level, and what's that feeling like? It's amazing. You know, it's 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 what it's all about. It's it's why you uh, do everything that we just spoke about. It's mm. why you get up early in the mornings and go train and it's why you stay up late at night reviewing old races and coming up with areas to improve. It, it's what it's all about. So when you stand on the top step of the podium, 
it's just uh, a sigh of relief to a degree and uh, obviously a huge level of satisfaction. How do you find the experience of, of race day and, and the actual race itself and being in the car? Are you relaxed? Have you got to a stage where you've got that level of confidence where you're very relaxed in your own ability or because of the speed and the danger involved, is there always a pretty high level of stress? No, I, I don't know whether it's just now that I'm that little bit more experienced or whatever, but I, I tend to be extremely laid back. Um, maybe it's just my personality or whatever, but I just don't get too excited about things because I find that you can, if you start getting overexcited, you start forgetting about the basics. And don't get me wrong, there's pressure. It's a results-based business. At the mm. end of the day, you've got to perform. There's a lot of people in your team working on your car, staying up late at night, being at the track early in the morning, all for you. So I use that pressure in a way to, to make me focus more. And um, that's the only thing that, that I find affects me in any way is, is getting the pressure and using it in the right way. Yeah, because that could be a lot of pressure, look. There's a lot of young sports people out there, and as you say, people are other people and other people's livelihoods are reliant on them. But it just feels that there's so much money involved, and there's so many people all coming down to you at 20, 21 years of age, having to deliver on the day. Yeah, you wouldn't really want to let that in. No, no, not at all. And it's probably something that I don't dwell on too much because if you start going down that route, your mind's off mm. what you should be focusing on. So I just try and stay in the now and one of the biggest things in motor racing as you rightly said is just focus on what you can control because there's so many things outside of your control um, that you have no say about or no control over so it's very important to distinguish between the two and just focus on doing your own job. What sort of driver are you? Are you an aggressive driver or a very tactical driver? I'd probably say tactical on the consistent side um, extremely consistent and uh, just probably measured in, in, in my approach as, as opposed to maximum attack every lap. In some cases, isn't the, isn't the best position to be in depending on what track you're at and what driving styles approach is, is, is required, but overall, um, overall uh, more smooth and, and consistent. So taking that next step up towards IndyCar or Formula One, where you are right now, is it fully in your hands as to what happens next? Or again, does it go back to the money side as to whether you can force your way through to that level? If you go out and you win races as simple as that, you'll automatically make the step up? No, unfortunately not. If you asked, me, if you asked that question 30 years ago or 20 years ago, you would have said, yeah. But uh, nowadays, there's so many more factors. It's, it's, it's turned into a commercial environment. So if you have a, a guy who's winning all his races yes he's going to get to a certain level but unfortunately to get to that main stage in IndyCar there's going to be, need to be some level of commercial backing but the nice thing is that the, the commercial backing is justifiable is and there's something to, to return and So IndyCar is the route you want to go down rather than Formula 1? Yeah absolutely I, I think America in its own right is is a is a huge huge environment to be in with many fans like there's over 100 million avid IndyCar fans so it gives you you and both your partners an initiative to pursue that because both are get, getting getting what they want to get out of it and um, it's an extremely high level with uh, many top drivers in it so to win it would be an absolute dream. We had Derek Daly in here uh, a few weeks back who obviously had a brilliant Formula One career himself and has had a, had a lifetime in racing. He's been a little bit of a mentor. Yeah, Derek's been, uh, been great to me. You know, I was also back over when he was, when he was in here for the interview. We were at Mondello Park competing, um, or not competing, driving his ex-Formula One car, which is a Guinness-backed March Formula One car V8. Absolute animal. What year was that from? 81, 82? That yeah, 81, right? 82. So um, a proper a proper machine, let's say. There's no uh, no driver aids and uh, <laughs> my appreciation for what those guys did back in the day has has grown an awful lot. A real real um, physical car to drive and it's just, it, it could bite any moment. It's one of those cars. But that was an amazing, amazing trip. And uh, yeah, Derek's, look, Derek's been great. He, he's one of those guys where... You can just call or text him any time. He's going to pick up the phone and give you his his honest opinion. And nine times out of ten, it's it's going to be right. He's been down so many roads, IndyCar, Formula One, sports cars. So the knowledge that he has built up 
and the experience that he has can't but be listened to, you know. So what's next? What's the plan for the coming year? So right now it's finish off this trip here in Ireland with the Motorsport Ireland Young Driver of the Year Awards, then go back to the US and start preparing and progressing for a 2020 season in US Formula 3 again. Um, 90% of the structure is in place and with the team and we know what program we want to to put in place early on the year and what areas we need to work on and uh, then it's a matter of um, hitting the track and uh, getting results so uh, I'm excited about it look it's my second year with the team they've won the team championship last year and also the driver championship so they know what they're doing I know them quite well now and I believe a second year with a group of people is always um, extremely worthwhile so Let's see what uh, what happens, but it's it's shaping up to be a good one. All right, James, thanks a lot for coming in the studio. You. Best of luck with the Young Driver of the Year award, the 50 grand to come in handy. <laughs> Absolutely, thanks for having me on. James Roby, keep a close eye on you over the next couple of years. Thank you. Thanks.